What are stories about picture-perfect families who do messed up stuff behind closed doors? I went to school with two sisters. Both very bright, well-liked girls. One morning after they left for school, mom shot dad twice killing him. Tried the OL, he was cleaning it, and it went off, excuse. She is serving a life term, now. That excuse generally doesn't work when she shot him twice. There was a brother-sister pair at my high school. Their parents were divorced and the dad was a little weird, but he coached Little League and was known as a generally good dad. The kids were amazing super popular, but because they were amazing people, not because they were mean. Everyone loved their mom too, she was a mother figure to a lot of kids at school. And then one Friday, the brother and sister didn't show up at school, and they stopped responding to texts. A group of their friends decided to drop by their house and look through the window, and saw the dad on the floor, shot through the head. Apparently, he was bipolar and had shot his two kids in the head while they were sleeping next to each other on the couch, then shot the wife's dog, who was staying with them, then himself. None of us ever understood exactly what happened or why he did it, but our small school wasn't quite the same for a very long time after that. I have never heard a more profound silence on campus than I did that Monday morning. Guy the first went to high school with had what looked to be a perfect family. He was a football star, mom and dad were successful, and they even had a white picket fence around their house. One day, he and his brother come home to find mom and a dad dead in the driveway. His dad was cheating, the mom found out and waited till he got home. Shot and killed him then shot herself, in the driveway no less. Up. These twin girls I knew from middle school were really nice, polite, had straight as, did community service, and were overall pretty well-rounded. Their parents seemed relatively normal and supportive. Later found out that the parents would make the girls stand on their heads until they passed out if they got a bad grade or acted out in any way. When I was in school, there was one girl who epitomized all-American girl next door cheerleader. She was gorgeous with blue eyes, long blonde hair, perfect body, and always had this 100-watt smile. She was on homecoming court, and so was her little sister. Her family was prominent locally. The stay-at-home mom ran the PTA, the dad had a prestigious job. This girl was on a parent-imposed diet since at least third grade, when I met her, despite never being fat. If she or her sister sassed her parents or got less than a B plus on an assignment, they were told they were, dogs, and they were, to crawl around the house and eat their food from dog bowls under the kitchen table. Kinda related, the valedictorian of my school when I was a freshman had a 4. 8 GPA full scholarship to great school. He was found wandering the streets, homeless, heroin addicted, and schizophrenic just a year and a half later. Valedictorians and heroin addiction seem to go hand in hand more often than I am comfortable with. A friend of mine and her family, family friends back in her state are involved with a lot of foster care. Her family has a couple of foster kids at the moment I think. Basically, one of her family friends who also takes foster kids in had this one Iranian kid. He was adopted on the side by a really normal, upper-middle-class white Australian family, except he was also kept in a cage in their shed as a dog. Their entire family was really pleasant and completely normal, their other biological children were also completely fine. They were discovered when the grandmother of that family came to visit and asked what the barking was, went to the shed and found the child in a cage barking madly. When the grandmother asked what the hell was happening, the parents of the family just responded with, oh he's just the dog, ignore him. She obviously reported it and now my friend babysits for the child every so often. He's pretty normal now but he has really awful reactions to certain sounds. They ended up contacting the biological mother who was some Iranian girl who lived with her family, but she didn't want to know anything about it as long as he was okay now. The people who currently take care of him are convinced that it was a child of sexual abuse, after seeing the mother's reaction, but a they can't really say anything I guess. I had a really sweet friend in high school. I'd been to church with her family, we'd been really great friends, she made excellent grades, was commander of the ROTC squadron, appointed by the instructors, and much, much more. During the brief time we were dating, she confided in me that her father periodically, her starting on her 15th birthday, and that had done the same thing to her older sister for her 15th birthday. I didn't ask why, I was just left kinda numb at that point. She revealed to me that she was pregnant and that her father had scheduled her and, within the week because it was 99% certainly his. Her older sister had to have a hysterectomy because apparently he was especially rough with her and caused massive internal trauma. Typing it on Reddit seems so tame. Honestly, the conversation we had was visceral and emotional unlike anything we'd ever had before. She screamed, I screamed, she cried, I held her, and she cried some more. 
Eventually she cried herself to sleep and ended up napping at my place for a few hours while I just sat at the foot of my bed, crying. I cried like a baby that night. I lived close by a family in the town I come from. The family was very known in the town, and were much appreciated for their contributions to social events. I knew the son got beaten up pretty bad frequently by the father. He always had bruises, and I saw him take beatings twice. Nobody knew. Fast forward to age 17. The son is out partying, did some drugs. He takes a bus home, he rapes the bus driver, then punches her, rapes her again, repeated four times. He went to prison. The family used a cover-up story of him getting into a big fight. So not really up, but a bit strange and unorthodox. I had a friend in high school whose family would lock every door in their house. I mean, every door. If there was a door, it would be locked and the key hidden somewhere in the house. I don't know if they were afraid of home invasions or what but it was crazy and took forever just to navigate the house. For instance, to get to the guest bathrooms you'd have to open the hallway door with the key hidden on the window while in the living room. Then, under the left-hand corner of the hallway carpet was the key to open the linen closet. Finally, in the linen closet under a stack of towels on the second shelf from the bottom would be the key to open the bathroom. It was like that for every friggin' door. Multiple keys to open multiple doors to get the right key to open the room you wanted to get into. Even the fridge was chained and locked with a key. My friend asked me to sleep over once. Once. I never went back. On the outside, my friend's family have a huge mansion, are eloquent, drive expensive cars, wear expensive suits, are all attending Ivy League schools or graduated from an Ivy League school. In the inside it is a whole different story. My friend is sleeping with his dad's girlfriend who is planning on marrying. His dad is 52, this girl is 25, and my friend is 20. His dad and brother didn't know and still do not know. He tells me that he is not just doing this because he find her attractive but to get back at his dad for barely spending any time with him. Apparently, his dad told him that he couldn't spend any time because he had a lot of work to do but somehow has enough time to go on a one-month vacation in Europe with his girlfriend. Throw away. I was raised as a Catholic in a small town. My family and I went to church every Sunday, as did the majority of the town. There was one family in particular that stood out from the rest of the community because they seemed so much holier than everyone else. There were seven or eight kids, all grown up with families of their own, and every one of them was involved in the church somehow whether it was singing in the choir, reading sermons or leading the youth group. They were all polite and very conservative and for some reason their seemingly perfect and holy lives used to bother the out of me, as if everyone else in the town couldn't possibly reach their level of dedication to the church. Their pureness almost seemed condescending. This summer I went back to my small town for a family reunion and we all went to Sunday Mass together. The All Holy Family was there, as expected, and I found myself even more bothered by them now that I have fallen from the church. On the way back from Mass, I expressed how perfect they still appeared and my mum went silent. Apparently, their purity is an act. The oldest brother has, and, molested all four of his sisters, starting from a young age up until they all moved out of home. The youngest sister couldn't take the abuse so she turned to her sisters for help, who essentially told her to, it up and deal with it. Obviously upset, she confessed what had happened to her father, who called her a liar and promptly disowned her. The entire family has sided with the older brother, including the sisters he continuously abused. It seems the perfect-looking families are usually the most up. Jeffrey Dahmer lived with his grandmother and helped take care of her for a bit. She had no idea what he did in the garage. I played in a really band just after high school. We had nowhere to practice, so we convinced the manager of a rental complex to let us rent a 20 by 10 storage. After all, it was away from everyone and we wouldn't bother a soul unless they just happened to be putting stuff away, taking out while we were playing. It was great, it was on the edge of town, but close enough kids could walk there from the middle and high schools, or from homes within a mile or so. I won't lie, for 18 19 year old kids trying to start college and play music, any fans was great for confidence. One kid hung around a lot, and we got to know him pretty well. He was 15, had a younger brother around 12. We knew who his family was, but had never really interacted much with them. His dad was the mayor of the town, pop around 6,000, and his mom was influential with the socialites of the town and surrounding cities. One day, Joe, no longer showed up to listen in on practice. Him and his brother were taken to child protective services and we never saw him again in person. It seems his mom and dad were, molesting them damn near every night, and recording it to share with others. They were only caught because of a routine computer audit on the official systems in the city. Dad kept a lot of it on his work computer, for whatever reason. 
it greatly saddens me that I had no idea the whole time it was going on. I knew, Joe, for several months, and he seemed like everything was fine. I now believe he came there every day during practice as an escape, and that we treated him like a human being. I was even trying to show him how to play the drums, like a big brother or something. I have no idea where he is now, but I hope he has found peace in his adult life. This was in a quite a big town a couple of years ago, so there was this one guy he was pretty religious everybody knew him as the good guy but at home he would, his own daughter, she was about 18 or 19, and her mother knew but couldn't do anything about it. So one day the father gets his daughter pregnant and realizes he is, so he looks up on the internet how to remove the kid from his daughter's stomach and buys the tools needed, he then proceeds to get his daughter and try the things he learned and she died during the process, the media then caught the news and everybody knew and the father was sent to jail and his family were living in a huge mess after that. I guess I can contribute to this thread. So most of my life I was pretty much an A, B plus student with a 3. 85 GPA average. I never really stood out. I was pretty short most of my life until I hit 16 and reached an average height of 59.5. I looked like any normal average looking kid who would write, draw stories all day in class instead of paying attention. I had plenty of friends, did ROTC, and could smile at the day like I didn't have a problem in the world. Nobody knew that at home my stepdad would beat the out of me. He would literally beat me into the ground then start stomping on my chest and try to say as many psychologically damaging things as he could. For example as a 7 year old child he threatened to kill me in my sleep. This would later lead to my insomnia problems. Anyways fast forward to when I was 16 and he would still keep this routine of beating me and threatening to kill me and my family if I ever told anyone until the summer of 2007. One day after visiting my biological father for the summer, on the exact day I come back from a plane ride from Maryland to Florida, about after 5 hours of being home, I hear a smacking noise from the kitchen followed by a distinct thump so I head into the kitchen and find my mom on the floor and my stepdad standing over her. Now, to this day I can't say for sure he hit her. I have no proof of it nor has my mother confirmed that he did, even though couple of months ago she admitted that he was her anyways behind my back, but I finally had my day. I literally almost beat him to death that day. Honestly if I hadn't accidentally hurt my hand hitting the tiled floor while I was beating his face and I would have killed him in my blind rage. But now it's 5 years later and I am 21, mom and my 3 half siblings live away from him, but he still sees his kids when he can, and other than my insomnia and irregular but deadly heartbeat I am doing fine. I got a job paying 12 an hour, I finished a couple years of college, my novel is coming along great and I've been sleeping 3 to 5 hours a night now. My grandmother, was married for 21 years had six children, was married to a physical therapist who made good money, volunteered as a camp counselor and lived a seemingly great life. But what no one saw was that my grandmother seduced teenage girls at summer camp. She had many affairs with teenage girls throughout the years, girls that my mom went to school with. It seriously, up the kids. My mom was the oldest, but she had to deal with hearing rumors and, at school. The worst though was the youngest. When my grandpa would be out of town or something, she'd invite the girls over, and make my uncle sleep in the backyard in a tent. TLR my grandma's, up. Was the picture perfect family man who dressed up as a clown for sick children in the hospital. Kinda like Patch Adams. While it certainly wasn't a picture perfect family, apparently Albert Fish's children were completely unaware of the horrific things he did. I don't want to relive that. Suffice it to say my parents were selfish, sadistic idiots. They fooled their friends. Mama's dead. Waiting for dad to die. My sister and I will find a way into a landfill and dump their ashes, like the garbage they were. When I was a teenager I peeked through the window of my friend's house. They were in the basement watching, together. Mom, dad, sisters and brother. My wife family are the worst people I have ever met. When she was younger she was seriously depressed, and still is. She attempted, by taking a fist full of pills. Her mom found her passed out on the living room floor next to the bottle of pills and rushed her to the ur. The doctors asked why she was passed out and why she was here at the ER and her mom wouldn't tell them that she took a bunch of pills, just kept saying, I don't know what's wrong with her, to keep up the whole, my family wouldn't do that, kinda thing. After we got married, they kept giving us advice along the lines of, if you want to have perfect marriage like we do, you must do this, this and this, then they get a divorce. I, hate those people. When I first met my best friend, and her family, they all seemed incredibly nice, well-rounded, and happy. As I got to know her however, I learned that she was and still is suicidal because her father is a raging, alcoholic, her mother doesn't care about her, and her older sister is going down the road of her mother, and the younger one will have to deal with the same, that those two do. 
My friend still has nightmares of her father choking her and beating her. She blames herself most of the time too. My only wish for her now, is for her to have the strength to leave that place. If you're reading this Ash, I am sorry. And if it gets too terrible, you're always welcome here in NY. I grew up with the son of Marcus Schrenker. Few years ago he made the news for faking his own death in a plane crash after the police started to catch on to his investment scam. The son was a great kid, along with his other siblings. Shame about his dad though. My mother is a teacher, father works for the city we live in. Three smart kids, nice house, picture perfect, right? When I was a kid, I think around six, I found some really up stuff on our computer, like my parents meeting with strangers and my dad eating cream pies out of my mom end. I grew distant and angry, but couldn't bring it up because it made me very uncomfortable and I knew it would go badly if they found out I knew. Eventually they found out I knew, when I ran away and they were beating me wanting to know why after the sheriff found me and brought me back. From that moment on, they treated me like, called me a, a fuck up, and a loser. They kicked me out, then claimed I ran away when people found out and threatened to send me to juvie if I didn't come back. I came back, then they kicked me out on my 18th birthday a month later with literally nothing, just told me to get the, out. I lived in a cave for a month, then a relative found out and let me live in their deer hunting camper on their deer lease. I didn't have electricity, a toilet, or running water, but I lived there a year until my girlfriend, current wife, she was 17 and couldn't do anything about it at the time, came into an inheritance and we used the money to put ourselves through school, we graduate this spring. I want to tell people how, my parents are but I am worried that they would do something to get back at me, so we just pretend they don't exist. What sucks is I am going to a peoplely to be a state trooper this next fall and they have to interview my parents for the FBI background check. The tale of one of my good friends. Her family seemed great on paper. Mother a doctor, father a priest, going to church, getting good grades, the usual. She was abused by one of the church congregation, and her parents wouldn't believe something like that would happen in their community, so they sent her away. She became mentally ill with anorexia and was placed in treatment centers around the country where she was abused again. Now she's 30. I love her, but we can't be together. She has some form of PTSD, has been in hospital more times than I can count, has tried to kill herself on a few occasions. The mental health team don't really seem to be helping either, but I don't know enough to make any kind of judgment. They say she is just being manipulative. She's incredibly intelligent, she has a good degree and is working on her PhD at the moment. I wish there was more I could do to help. My hubby's uncle's family was that perfect, straight-laced, Mormon family. Family of seven, church every Sunday, well-behaved kids, etc. One Thanksgiving day, things blew up in front if the whole family. Long story short, family was arguing about some things, and the end of the day turned out to be people screaming and one of his nephews strangling him. My hubby had to rip him off his uncle. After that incident, all these stories began to unravel. Apparently his uncle was, toward his children and wife. She was having an affair with someone half her age. She would sneak guys to her house and have her oldest daughter watch to make sure her husband wasn't coming home. Also there was rumors of the dad, hubby's uncle, having an affair with his own stepdaughter. Also the oldest boy in the family would go around flashing his thang to his little sisters. Sad. Just sad. His youngest daughters are such sweethearts too. Hey, thanks for subscribing and liking. It really means a lot to me. While you're here, feel free to hop on over to the last video. See you there. Ronnie.